when I was going into pharmacy school, I went on YouTube and I looked up what is pharmacy, what is a pharmacist, and there was nothing, okay? I had such a skewed misconception of what pharmacy was. And it took my roommate to tell me that I wasn't getting a PhD and I was getting a PharmD and I'm like, well, what's the difference? video brings me so much emotion because when I was going through pharmacy school I had no idea what I was doing I had no idea how difficult this experience was going to be for me I had no idea how much harder it was going to get progressively as the years went on and I didn't really have a reason why I was doing it besides that it was for my family. It was me taking advantage of the opportunity that my parents crossed the border to give me and that was higher education. And today I just want to talk about why I chose pharmacy. I'll tell you guys a little bit of what pharmacy is and then three, I'll tell you why you should or should not go to pharmacy school. So this will be a two-part series. The first one is my pharmacy degree and experience and two will be why I quit this six-figure job. And yes, pharmacists do make over six figures however that has changed over the years and i'll dig a little bit into that today as well so number one why did i choose pharmacy so i actually got my cna in high school i was part of hosa which is health academy student association they prepared you to go into a career in the medical field particularly within nursing I had no idea what a PharmD was at this time. I thought I was diehard nursing all my life. So I get my CNA my senior year of high school and I did not want to do it. My mom is a pharmacy technician. So a pharmacy technician is essentially the helper of the pharmacist. So there's the retail setting and the hospital setting. Community and clinical are more of the technical terms. My mom brought me in as a volunteer into the pharmacy and, hold on. This was like, you know those movies where the lights start shining and like the wind's blowing through your hair, like that kind of experience. It, I mean, in order to even go into a pharmacy now, you need to have a, a license, even as a student, which is sim similar to what my mom has. And being there just really opened my eyes to the opportunity of me being a pharmacist. I then started looking into pharmacy school. So I started getting really close with my counselor and she recommended there was a college fair and you walk around the college fair and there's all these colleges and I just keep asking, like, I wanna be a pharmacist. The thing is that pharmacy technician school is not a pharmacist. Like you are getting your doctorate in pharmacy when you go to become a pharmacist versus the pharmacy technician is a certification now in the state of Illinois. So whenever I would go around and ask these recruiters and colleges, I want to be a pharmacist, they would give me a pamphlet to become a pharmacy technician. And I was like, I don't know what I don't know, but I just know this, this doesn't make sense. Then I came across this purple table and their cloth said St. Louis College of Pharmacy. And purple was my favorite color at the time. And I just started asking questions. He mentioned that this was a six year program. So I, didn't know what that meant, but everyone else was telling me it was like a two year program. And I asked him like, hey, they're saying, I'm confused, asking, right? You have to ask those questions. Like, I don't know what this means. I just want to be a pharmacist. I don't know anyone who's a pharmacist. So he really recommended that I make a trip out there to go visit the college, which is exactly what I did. And at the time I was dating this guy and it was just me and him that went. And I was the only one that wasn't with my parents. So it was, again, this first generation experience that I, I want to share because I think a lot of us go through this and we feel like the outsider, but we are 
being put in situations that are only making us stronger, more knowledgeable for our future. So I, I go and visit the college and I just fell in love. But I did not have the required ACT score to get into that college. So I pretty much emailed admissions almost every week until I got my letter of acceptance in Christmas. Actually, so I still have my acceptance letter. So it is a bottle, message in the bottle. Here is my congratulations. That's how my acceptance was back in the day. I think now you get like an email or something. So when people reach out to me like, hey, I want to be a pharmacist or what are your thoughts on pharmacy school now? Why should, should I do it? I always say, like anything in healthcare, it depends. And the most important thing, which leads me to answering my second question is, what is pharmacy, right? So what is it? And why is no one saying what it is? If you go and Google it, let's see, what does Google say? Quote Google, pharmacy is a store where medicinal drugs are dispensed and sold. The science or practice of the preparation and dispensing of medicinal drugs. Okay, so why am I going to college or you know going to a doctorate program to dispense and sell drugs? Like what? It, it took me graduating my doctoral program to understand the differences between an MD, which is a doctor of medicine versus a farm d which is a doctor of pharmacy so even though it's doctor of medicine they're not taking as much focus into the drug treatments they are as an md the focus is assessing signs and symptoms for a diagnosis of a disease state so they do take pharmacology as some of their courses but that's not their main focus so pharmacology is the therapeutic drug treatment for those disease states now, PharmDs, doctors of pharmacies, we study drugs. So our four-year doctorate, similar to a four-year med school student, four-year doctorate program, what we're doing is year one, you are studying very foundational skill level things like a microbiology. Later on, when we learn antibiotics, you have to understand the microbes, gram positives, gram negatives, the treatments, the staph aureus, the, when you look into a microscope, what the bacteria is that you're going to be treating and what antibiotics treat it. So that's foundational as far as microbio, um, we have med chem, so medicinal chemistry, which is another one of those courses where you learn the chemical structures of drugs. So adding a hydrogen or an oxygen or adding a hydroxyl group to the end of a, of a chemical compound, what is that drug, how is that going to dissolve and react versus if you take away the hydrogen and just have a simple oxygen. Chemical structures, not my thing. But did I know that before I went into pharmacy? No, because I thought I was just going to be dispensing and selling drugs. I actually have this chemical structure over my bed and I'll leave it to you guys in the comments to see if you can figure out what it is. It is missing some hydrogens, so best of luck. In addition to micro and med chem, in year one, you learn disease states. And I believe it was a total of 36 disease states that we go through. And this is what we have one year versus an MD that has four years of this. So we go into symptoms, signs and symptoms, epidemiology, everything about the disease state before we learn how to treat it because we have to know what caused the problem first. So we go into chemically what's going on in the body. So for example, diabetes, we go into the pancreas, right? Why the beta one, the beta two cells, what's the difference between type one diabetes versus type two diabetes? Then we go into diagnosing. So in order to diagnose someone with diabetes, their blood sugars need to be within a certain range versus someone who just might have a one-time high blood sugar. There's fasting blood glucose, there's postprandial blood glucose, which is two hours after you eat, how your body should respond to sugar. So that's kind of what we go into first year, is just understanding how to diagnose, understanding these disease states. And that was, I remember <laughs> just saying like, yo, Where's my white coat? Because y'all can have it back. I... 
to wrap up year one you're very foundational you're getting into more of an overview of what you're about to take on the next three years so then year two and three you go into what's called therapeutics they've now switched the program to it where it is system based so you go you have a cardiology you have a nephrology you have a infectious disease you go more by body systems versus the disease states what i learned so therapeutics one we started with hypertension so we touch back okay here's how it's diagnosed now here's every single drug treatment possible but the thing what's so hard guys what is pharmacy what is so hard about pharmacy school is that there are hundreds and hundreds of drugs out there that when you don't know them and you're studying them for the first time, you don't know which ones you have to focus on. So an angiotensin converting enzyme or an ARB, an angiotensin receptor blocker. There's like a shit ton of ACEs and a shit ton of ARBs and they all kind of sound the same. So when I get a patient, I have to review their drugs and assess their appropriateness. Pharmacists are so underrated. What is pharmacy? It is a lot of shit, okay? It is knowing anything and everything about a drug, understanding how they affect the body, understanding how they interact with other drugs, how they interact in specific environments, specifically patients. All right, it is time to answer the question you have all been waiting for, and that is, why should you go to pharmacy school or become a pharmacist. As I mentioned earlier, it was at a career fair where I learned that there was this doctor of pharmacy. I also ended up doing some research with my good old friend, Dr. Google, and I looked up average salary incomes for a pharmacist. So I find that on Glassdoor, a pharmacist in Chicago makes a range from 100 to $160,000 per year. Salary.com says 130 to 160 per year. ZipRecruiter goes all the way down to 58,000 to $140,000 per year. Now Forbes, here's how much money pharmacists make in every state. So this article goes into 10 states where pharmacists earn the least amount of money. So if you're still considering pharmacy, one thing I'd recommend is looking up these kind of articles and educating yourself on, oh, look, if I'm in North Dakota, I'm in one of the worst paying states as a pharmacist. I do not want to do pharmacy if that's the case. So the most recent data from Forbes is that in 2018, the average pharmacist salary in Illinois was $125,000. So my offer was $100,000 for 30 hours a week, which came out to about $64 an hour. Everyone who was graduating with me were at about $55 to $60 an hour, but the reason why I was paid $10 more than everyone else was because I was bilingual and the company that I was working for was doing a huge initiative on Spanish-speaking pharmacists being in Hispanic-dominant communities, which is so powerful because there's a huge barrier as it is within healthcare and healthcare providers. So from the patient to the provider, that anything we can do to minimize that gap is so essential. So the money now, my some of my friends that are in retail, their offers are as low as $38 an hour, which is, I can't do math, but shit, okay? I would never go into pharmacy at knowing that that's the rate, but why? Because pharmacy school is expensive. I went to a six year program, so what does that mean? I did two years undergrad, four years grad school, but all in one year. Technically now to be a pharmacist, you have to do four years undergrad and four years grad school to get a full doctorate degree. I started my first year, so we were private, so you were charged whether in and out of state tuition the same. My first year was about $28,000 for first year. I think that was room and board. My second year, a lot of money. So all the way up to my sixth year where I paid $34,000 just for tuition alone. So if you add everything up i graduated with about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in student loan debt which again 
my salary making a hundred thousand dollars minimum per year equates to a good percentage of of it going straight into my loans so to answer your question should you go into pharmacy well it depends the number one question you should ask yourself and where you should start is why do you want to do pharmacy do you have a passion to learn drug and understand chemistry and organic chemistry and chemical structures and therapeutic knowledge of body systems and how your body works and how it responds to drugs if you are it might be something that you'll really enjoy versus if after you've watched this video and you're like holy crap I'm not trying to do any of that, then don't. Again, if you're doing it for the money, let me tell you, I thought six figures was it. Six figures to me, I thought I was gonna be rolling in dough. I thought I was gonna be waking up with money bands. I thought I was gonna be able to buy all my Gucci belts, my Louis Vuittons, my Burberry scarf. But I, I don't regret having done pharmacy because it's opened so many doors. So that being said, I think there is one specific field and I'll make a video simply covering industry pharmacy that I feel is so overlooked. Overlooked as we need to talk about this. Specific to industry pharmacy, what it is, what I wish I would have known about it and how you can get into it and I think if you are someone who's watching this video, you're a lot maybe more tech savvy, you're a lot more social, innovative, forward thinking. That industry is really that low key gem that no one's talking about that I maybe see myself taking on in the future and actually enjoying that part of pharmacy. And a lot of these jobs in industry, you don't even need to take your six hour board NAPLEX exam nor do you need to take the state law exam. So if you have any uh, additional questions about pharmacy, I'd, I'd love to really answer them. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Are you someone who is looking to quit your nine to five after um, if you already went through this pharmacy route, check out my next video that will go into why I quit, how to quit and why you should quit. And also my other video that will go into industry pharmacy, what it is, the hidden gems, what are the benefits, and why maybe you should go into pharmacy to consider industry pharmacy. That being said, thank you guys so much again. You don't have to like this video. You don't have to subscribe to my channel. The only thing that I will ask is that if there is somebody that you think will gain something out of watching this video, whether it's someone who you think wants to go into pharmacy or someone who you think would be a perfect, an amazing pharmacist, share this video with them and let them know that this exists. And again, thank you guys so much for your love and your support and I'll catch you on the next one.